and hey, good evening everybody i can see that we are live streaming on tc tv cable station eight we are recording and in a few moments we will be broadcasting live out to youtube which is important for me because i gotta watch the uh the public chat <clears throat> Good evening. The time is now 630. I'm Chairman Mike Curry, and I'd like to call the Select Board Business Meeting to order on this 9th day of December 2020. Please rise and join me with uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands. One, nation, one nation, under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you, everyone. Before we begin, I'd like to state for the record that we are not only being live streamed on both K TCTV, Cable Station 8, and our YouTube web platform, but this evening's recording will be available for later viewing on YouTube. Let's do a quick roll call, see if we've got a quorum this evening. I see Tim Toth. Good evening, Tim. Terry Griffiths. Hello. Hi, Terry. And let's see. I don't see Jeff yet, um, but we know that uh, he might pop in and i know julie richard uh just needed the link uh sent to her and uh she, she'll be joining us but we do have a quorum and also with the uh this evening with us we have adam lamontaine former chair of the select board john Kaplis, mike poplis bob sozik hannah bennett caitlin scott holly young ken lombardi is with us or at least that's the, the name that i see on the uh, the login and we expect a couple of, a couple of other guests this evening as always our agenda for this evening has been set no later than 48 hours by law uh it is publicly available at the official source for town information templetonma.gov and there was uh just for those of you watching at home there was an amendment where we um we amended the agenda to add a open meeting law complaint uh so we could consider that this evening <clears throat> Although I have the discretion as chairperson to add and remove from the agenda, it has been set to allow for time, personal resources, and public awareness. I reserve the right to move agenda items around to best fit our guests and business. Thank you. Uh, public participation is and public comment is still possible via the chat section of the live stream on YouTube. I and TCTV and others are monitoring the chat section and can address uh, comments and questions as they appear or when appropriate. Remember, this chat area is part of the permanent record, so if it's not apparent, please state your name and optionally your street as you would during town meeting if you wish to participate. Remember, most uh, there are a lot of YouTube names out there that are informal, so we can't tell. Um, and, and I always mention that the live chat is approximately 10 to 15 seconds behind the live meeting, so if we miss something, hopefully we can circle back to that. Zoom rules of the road. Um, please use vi video when possible. Um, if you don't don't have business directly uh, when as we're dealing with it in the board, you can turn off your your uh, video camera. Um, please use your mute feature um, at all times unless you're wanting to speak. And speaking of speaking, you can use the hand uh, raise hand feature in Zoom if you wish to break in or just politely. Uh, come off of mute and request the ch uh, of the chair uh, that you're uh, wishing to speak. Uh, viewers of the live stream may also ask questions um, that will be acknowledged by the chair. Um, and I'll, ju I'll just, again, as I said, I'll be watching to make sure that uh, we address anything that's on that live chat. Okay, uh, got all the admin stuff out of the way. Um, let's jump into tonight's meeting. Um, first item, as always, with our business meetings, is there any public comment? <clears throat> uh, during public comment, um, as in the past couple of weeks and months, uh, we've tried to make sure that the, the public was aware of any, um, any, anything that's going on in the community that they should be aware of. Um, 
I will say that uh, if you've been watching the business meetings, you saw that I was made the uh, incident commander. We transferred over from Carter Terenzini to uh, myself as the incident commander. And uh, during this public health crisis, I want to make uh, uh, bring the public up to speed with two things. Um, out on the website, you'll see the updated COVID numbers for Templeton. Uh, we are at 23. That is just under the red uh, for communities under 10,000. Red is at 25. But I will say um, that is um, that is it. Uh, we've increased it by half over, uh, since Thanksgiving. So we were at 13. We are now at 23. And also today, Governor Baker um, uh, released the plans for immunization in, in Massachusetts. So um, please, uh, I know that uh, the health department, I, I mean, uh, the Board of Health, I think, is meeting next week. They'll probably put, have that on their agenda or, or talk through that. Uh, but please check the uh, the governor's website uh, on that important immunization plan that was released today about 12 o'clock. They'll probably put, have that on their agenda or, or any other uh, public comment. Go ahead, Terry. The governor's website, uh, on that. I'm not sure if this should wait till the end, but um, Steve Drury doesn't have the ability to chat publicly. He doesn't have Wi-Fi in his home and he doesn't have dial up. Um, and he did send us an email. I didn't know if we wanted to um, push it to a workshop or do an executive session about his um, email. I do need to do a little email. Uh, more research, but um, we're just wondering if, you know, in his cause, if our municipality is so small, like from what I understand, larger municipalities, is it, it isn't an issue to have an analog meter. They don't charge you for that. So he's still having that. He was concerned that a, an illegal lien was put on his property and it was removed without even, he wasn't even told. He happened to stumble upon that issue that the lien was taken off. Um, I know you suggested I uh, call Louie and Royer because we didn't discuss anything. I just wanted to know how to address this issue for his sake. And he did send us all, everyone on the board an email, um, an email. So I yep. just wanted to represent him the best way I could for that issue. He does have a problem with RF waves and a health issue. Um, they were saying they were going to shut his electricity I, off. I can answer it. Go ahead. So um, what you're doing on behalf of Steve is bringing, if he were sitting here in front of us at the meeting, he would go over what he, he went with his email. He would say that he had a grievance with the uh, the uh, the tax office and the light department. Um, so I'll respond to it as if he was sitting there. Um, I've, I've taken the information and we'll go to uh, the tax office and uh, the light and water department to address that issue um, of the, the he was upset about the lien. So um, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Gary. I have one more. Um, okay. You had asked me. I told you that my uh, neighbor worked in group homes. And I ran into him last night. This is in regard to the group home going in at um, 15 Carruth Road. And um, he's got a good rapport with his um, bosses, et cetera. And he did say that um, the residents up on the hill have a right to know what type of resident, what type of clients or residents will be inhabiting that home. For instance, he did work and represented, he worked for a group home. They were going to put in child molesters next to a bus stop. And the residents had a right to know that. He fought for that cause and they did not put child molesters next to a bus stop. He also informed me that whatever the residents are in the group homes, they are a cluster of the same um, genre, I'm not sure of the exact verbiage. So you wouldn't have a violent, somebody with like violent meaning like PTSD. If there's people with PTSD, they're in the same group home. You wouldn't put them in with a sex offender. Sex offenders are not in with child molesters. Do you see what I'm saying? If you have Down syndrome, they have their own 
residents. Um, and basically, uh, it's a company from Connecticut that is doing the developing, but the state is, it's almost like they're just renting or leasing. They have a manager of that. So I'm trying to, you know, help um, Dave Pease in the coalition up there at least get that much done, but there is so there's more to it. So I just wanted to put that out there. I want to make the board and aware that that is a concern and it needs to be addressed as well. I, I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Chairman, um, how you want to take it, take it from here. It's public comment. I'm not, I'm not going to comment on it at all. Is there any action the board can take to well, help that? There, there, it's public comment, so you can you can make you can go through these things, but it's not an agenda item. I'm not going to deliberate on it tonight. Okay. I, like so I, I would have to request it be on the agenda or with the coalition. Either, but you would come to Adam uh, first, and the, uh, and Adam and I would discuss it whether we wanted to put it on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That's Great, it. Thanks. Thanks, Terry. Any other public comment? Okay, hearing none, uh, let's move on to uh, meeting minutes. We've got two sets of minutes. We have the regular uh, meeting minutes of November 23rd and the executive session minutes of same evening. And those are in your, no, those are in your packet, except uh, th those are in your packet and the executive session minutes are separate. I've reviewed them. I haven't seen anything that would uh, prohib prohibit them from being entered. So I'll entertain a, mo uh, a motion when ready. Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, Tim. I move to approve the minutes of 11 20 as presented. Okay, hey, motion. Second. Thank you, Terry. I have a motion and a second for the meeting minutes for 1123. Any further discussion? Hearing none on the motion to approve the minutes of 1123 as presented, how do you vote, Tim? Yes. Terry? Yes. Is uh, Julie, are you connected by phone? There's a telephone number that um, I can't identify. I'm not sure if that's um, Julie or not. She has connected by phone before. Okay, and I vote yes as well. Julie, did you um, did you hear that motion? She's off of mute. All right, we'll move on. Okay, executive session minutes. Tim, would you do me the honor for the executive session? Certainly. I move to approve the executive session minutes of 11 20 not to be released at this time. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, on the motion to approve the executive session minutes of 1123, not to be released at this time. How do you vote, Tim? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? She might, the, 9726 okay. is. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Julie. And I vote yes as well. All right, thanks. We can move on from mid, uh, minutes. Uh, new business, introduction of new employees. Adam. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have a uh, couple new, or a few new employees here uh, this evening for the board. Uh, I'll start off and have Bob introduce his new, uh, new addition to the team. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board. Um, we recently hired a, a young guy from uh, 
Peter's, uh, Peter's Ham, um, which he replaced my youngest employee that wanted to go out and test the waters elsewhere. Um, Mike Popolis, uh, he's, he's got some equipment background. Um, he just uh, passed his uh, CDL class he enrolled in. Um, moving forward, he wants to move up quickly, and uh, so far, so good. He's going to be a good employee, and I, I hope he's here for the long haul. Mike, if you want to jump in and say hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hey, Mike, how are you? Thank you for having me on the meeting. Sure. Yes, as Bob said, I am very excited to uh, be part of the highway department. Um like I said, I just got my CDL. I'm waiting on to get my hoist license and all my certifications, and I'm ready to hit the ground running. Fantastic, Mike. Um, welcome aboard to the team. Um, I, I think you'll really enjoy working in Templeton. Um, you've got a great department head. Bob Sozik has done a lot for this community. I, I, I really look forward to his, uh, his leadership. And, you know, as he said, uh, moving up the, uh, the ladder, yeah, Bob, why would you say that? <laughs> You're trying to get yourself out of a job. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, Mike, uh, welcome to town. We're very, we're very glad to have you. Thank you very and much, Mike. Well, thanks uh, for coming on with Bob. Uh, now I have uh, Steve Castle, who will introduce. Oh, hey, uh, Adam, hang on, hang on one sec. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Yeah, welcome to the team, Mike, and I know what it takes to go through and get all those certs under your belt, so kudos to you. Congratulations, Mike. When did you start? When did he start? December 1st. Oh, well, yes, there you go. Congratulations. Perfect. Thank Congratulations. you very much. Congratulations. Welcome to the team. Thanks, Julie. All right, Adam, please go ahead and proceed. Uh, Steve Castle, would you want to introduce uh, your employees? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, so, Caitlin Scott is a new employee. Caitlin, why don't you turn on your video? And Caitlin's been helping us with uh, graphics and doing some slides. She's also also started doing some video for us and we'll do more. Caitlin comes to us from Monty Tech. She's a senior and we're talking about having her do a co-op position part-time with us after the holiday. So she'll be able to spend a couple whole days a week here helping us out. She's already been a great help to me. So why don't you say hi, Caitlin? Hi. And she's right here in the senior center office. Uh, we're a couple doors down um and working together pretty well so she's doing great and she's learning the streaming and the server um ins and outs as well and i i want to just call out hannah and hannah if you can turn on your video too and say hi we hi. talked about hannah when she was first hired um yep. a year or two ago I don't have any concept of time anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but we didn't properly introduce her and she, her work has been outstanding. Yep. So she's been, a, she's been great with helping me with the meetings and really pulled over to do this. And I just want to say all the people that have come through our program, including all the interns that we could not hire previously, they're mature adults and um, they show a lot of responsibility and accountability and we're very proud of them so keep up the good work I, I, could, I couldn't agree with you more steve um caitlin welcome to the team hannah i know you've been on the team but uh i'm, I'm glad that steve uh, took this approach so we could uh see the unified front of tctv um hopefully the folks uh sitting in their in their living room uh realize the hard work that goes into that this has been a very good year for C tctv uh, not only as a, a as an agency, as an entity, but also for us, we could not be doing the meetings like uh, we're doing without the uh, the technical support, um, that infrastructure that that allows us to stay connected and give us that continuity of government. Um, so hopefully, you, um, Caitlin, remember those words because as you know, if you said you're in your senior year and you talk about your uh, experiences here. You're supporting the continuity of government in, 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 a, com in a community. Are, now, you said you go to Monty Tech. Do you live in Templeton? 
I live in Winchenden. In Winchenden, okay. So it, it's about providing uh, continuity for government in the in the area. So huge thing. Uh, you've got a great teacher there in Steve. Um, he's built this this little mini empire, and uh, he keeps getting money. Uh, so we keep uh, supporting him doing that. So uh, fantastic. And welcome to the team, Caitlin. I'll, I'll uh, turn it over to the rest of the board. Caitlin, Thank you. Welcome. It's always exciting to see fresh faces and some young blood coming in. And I'm saying that very uh, wholeheartedly. And I'm sure you can agree that what you're learning with the practical experience really ties together the theory, the background, and all the didactic <laughs> education that got you to this point. Good luck. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Caitlin. And I do agree that there, um, in, with Hannah, the level of maturity is there. I've had the privilege of seeing her at... Um, the parade, the Christmas parade last year in a professional capacity, and she was on point. And I've also seen her off the job at Red Apple Farm and just an all around lovely lady. And I'm looking forward to working with you too as well, Caitlin. You're so gosh darn cute, you know. <laughs> Not to diminish the importance, but you both bring me back to my youth. Thanks, Terry. Okay, Adam, uh, any more? That is all I have for this evening. Oh, thank you all. <laughs> Mike, Caitlin, um, Hannah, well, I know Caitlin and Hannah are probably going to stick around, but uh, Mike, thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're sticking around, but I uh, appreciate it. You might want to st stick around for the next thing. The, so the first, the, 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 uh, the first bit of business, aside from introductions of new employees, um, Back in 2019, uh, the, the, that year, um, I was elected and passed John Kaplis um, walking out the door. Um, he served from 2016 to 2019, and a lot of, a lot of good things happened uh, in T Templeton within that time. And as we have done uh, before, at least with this board, um, we wanted to make sure that their, that their deeds, that their service did not go uh, unnoticed. Um, Di we had Diane, Diane Haley uh, on with uh, and, and received uh, Ann Gobi, a senator, um, her senator citation. Um, and we're bringing John in tonight into our Zoom meeting as he has a citation from <laughs> Governor Baker that uh, we received mo uh, months ago, but did not have a, um, a w we did not really kind of, I think that we weren't there with our Zoom or realize we wanted to wait and see how it went and do it in person. And here we are uh, electronically. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to make sure everybody understood we should have, uh, we would like to have done this in, in person, but John, uh, I'm glad that we're able to, uh, to give you your, to present your citation uh, this evening. The governor said he could not make it. <laughs> um, but what I'd like to, uh, we did a little bit of rehearsal on this, so uh, do a little bit of trick our hands so we can actually uh, give him his citation. Um, if I could have everybody, if you're on uh, camera, if I could have you turn off your camera until the, uh, the end of this presentation or when I, I ask you to turn it back on, um, the folks at home will understand why if we have just two videos, the presentation will go much better. Okay, so without further ado, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Selectman John C. Kaplis, Chairman. On behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I am pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation in recognition of your three years of dedicated service as Chairman of the Templeton Board of Selectmen. The Commonwealth also commends your oversight of several critical initiatives that dramatically improve the lives of the citizens of Templeton, Massachusetts, which include the four villages of Baldwinville, East Templeton, Otter River, and Templeton. This, under my hand, this eighth day of April in the year 2020, signed Charles D. Baker, Governor, and Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor. So, John, I give to you your governor's certificate. Can you see that? Congratulations. Here it comes. <laughs> 
I'm waiting for him to pull. <laughs> Way to go, gentlemen. Fantastic. Congratulations. All right. Uh, you can, people can come back on camera. Uh, John, the floor is yours. Hold on, you're on mute. Wait, you're on mute. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes. Well, thank you very much for the uh, the opportunity to come on, and obviously this is a uh, great accomplishment for me uh, and the board that was uh, that was passed, and obviously presented a lot of information to the current board. Um, a lot of initiatives were taken care of and, and were done, and I hope that the people can recognize that they're citizens of Templeton and the hard work and the dedication that we do or that I did. I mean, it was very challenging for me, but, um, but I'm very happy. And, you know, thank you very much for this opportunity. And obviously um, I'll pass on the word to uh, governor Baker and the Lieutenant governor. Thanks for their, uh, their support as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot, John. Any other words? Uh, congrats, John. And coming out of the peanut gallery, uh, former select person Deborah Wilder also sends congratulations and comments well coordinated. Thank you. Happy for you, John. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, John. I very much appreciate it. Um, and uh, I hope you and your family have a great Christmas. Definitely will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good night. Night. Hey, John. Night. All right. Um, moving on to the uh, the next item on business that is uh, action relating to annual licenses renewals uh, for liquor, common victualler live entertainment, automatic amusement, class two and class three auto licenses. So what I'm going to do for the, the licenses, I'll share my screen. I think, yep, I've got the, <clears throat> so here is the updated list for license renewals for this evening under liquor license. Um, Holly, the first one on the liquor license, Otter River Hotel, um, also known as the Red Onion, um, that one's on and I'm, I, I'm understanding that they're ready to open that establishment again. They are not currently going to open. Um, what the plan is, he's just staying closed because of COVID. So okay. as soon as he feels prepared to open with COVID regulations, he's going to. So what we're going to do is just have everything approved, everything signed and ready. And when he's ready to get his license, he'll let me know he's opening, get his certificate of insurance to us. Uh, the ABCC is allowing us to waive that okay. until, until they open. And then I'll hand him the licenses at that point. So we'll just hold them in the office. All right. Thanks for that explanation. That was probably the only one that I had um, a question on. So under mm -hmm. liquor licenses, we have Otter River Hotel, pa uh, Patriots Packers Package Store, Village Liquor, and Mini Mart. Under Class 2 auto licenses, we have Cash Incorporated, uh, Chesterfield Motors, um, the COS Garage, Franklin Park Enterprises, Insurance Auto Auctions Incorporated, Richard and Sandra, Amistadi, DBA, The Classic Corner. Under common victualler license, it's the uh, Otter River Hotel doing business as the Red Onion, Cumberland Farms in Baldwinville, Patriots Ro Roast Beef and Grill. Under um, automatic amusement licenses, we have Otter River Hotel doing business as Red Onion. Uh, same for the li live entertainment license. And then finishing out the list with the class three auto licenses, Paul Constantino Jr. doing business as Constantino Salvage, Franklin Park Enterprises, and lastly to the list is USA Auto Recycling. <clears throat> I'll put the, uh, the motion out there. We can have any discussion or if there are any questions from the board. I move to approve the license renewals 
that is for liquor, common victualler, auto amusement, live entertainment. Class two and three auto pending all fees, taxes are paid to date and all required inspections are complete as follows. And that's the list that I just had showed on the screen. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that list of renewals? Not on the list of renewals, but is there an update on the Thirsty Turtle? Uh, Thirsty Turtle, um, we did their license in our last group. Yeah. And um, he is, from what I know, he did present um, the ABCC with a, I got some feedback. Okay, um, I'm just gonna, Steve, I'm gonna mute the people that I, that I see that are on just so, um, okay. So it, Terry answered your question. Um, Mr. Arsenal uh, obviously uh, posted a, a uh, COVID, uh, not a relief plan, but a, um, a fix it plan, which was required for them to, um, pull the the uh the suspension the indefinite suspension so that has been lifted already but a, a great question because um with the rollback to phase three um there was uh holly had sent out to all of our our licensees our alcohol businesses that uh that there are some uh rollback considerations so we have to make sure well we already made i mean they're sent out but the, uh just mentioning it tonight uh, I think is a good thing that we are in a rollback situation right now. So if you're a license holder and watching right now, make sure you're checking your email from uh, Holly Young as there is uh, some stipulations during this rollback. I know Kroll's switched over to takeout only now and they put out a new menu and what they needed to do already. Okay. Okay, any further questions on that list that I've got on the screen right now? I'm gonna pull it off. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions or comments on the motion to uh, for the annual license renewals for liquor, common victualler, live entertainment, automatic amusement class two and three auto license as presented, how do you vote, Tim? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? I saw that she came off mute, but I didn't I didn't hear her vote. I will vote yes. That gives us Yes. Sorry. Oh, thank okay. Thank you very much, Julie. All right. Um Holly, that was unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, next item on the agenda this evening is action relating to a possibility of creating joint purchase, purchasing group with Dunstable and Townsend. And uh, Adam, I, I think uh, Kevin Pecos is on with us this evening. Good evening, Kevin. Hello, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Excellent. Kevin, uh, for this presentation this evening, uh, I, I do have the slides so I can present them. Um, Great. I'll put them up on the screen in a moment. Um, I'll put them up on the screen in a moment and then you can just uh, tell me when you, to advance the slides. Adam, did you have any op opening remarks before Kevin starts his presentation? Uh, the only thing I have to offer is, uh, you know, the, the way the schedule worked out, it just, they, they were, Kevin and, and Joy and uh, Ken were going to actually go, or at least one of them were going to go to the IAC, the Insurance Advisory uh, Committee, before coming here. But the way the schedule worked, and that with there only being one meeting uh, for December with the select board, it was a little bit backwards. So, okay. um, but they they do plan on going to the Insurance Advisory uh, okay. Committee as well. Ken and Joy, uh, good evening. Glad you could join us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.
Kevin, can you see the presentation? I can. Can uh, can everyone else see it? More importantly, Mike. <laughs> yes. Yep, I think we're good to go. Great. All right. Well, hello, uh, <clears throat> members of the board and um, Adam and Holly as well. Uh, thank you very much for giving us some time on your agenda tonight to make this presentation to you. Um, <clears throat> we've been your consultants for your um, uh, employee group health insurance program for a couple of years now. And we've been working with your insurance advisory committee uh, to review a variety of possible changes to your health plan, all with the uh, perspective of maintaining good coverage and trying to reduce costs um, for both the employees in the town as well. And I know that in the coming year that uh, has never been more critical. <clears throat> um, we have been looking for some time now at seeing if there was a way for Templeton to partner with surrounding communities and uh, take advantage of um, a couple different things, which I'll get into uh, in a, a few slides from now that uh, have the potential to save you and your employees a great deal of money. So if you could flip that slide, please, Mike. Um, <clears throat> first, I'll give you a short commercial uh, and flip again, please. A short commercial because I know the board doesn't know who we are. NFP National Financial Partners, slide please. Um, we are um, one of the largest uh, broker advisors for employee health benefits, specializing in health insurance uh, in the world. Uh, we've got 50, over 50,000 corporate clients, 4,800 employees, 150 offices across the US and six international offices, which I don't think I'll ever get to go to. <laughs> slide please. Um, more importantly, and on point, uh, we have about 400 clients in Massachusetts, and uh, much more importantly, we are now over 100 municipal clients and growing. Uh, we are the advisors to four JPAs or joint purchase arrangements, one right in your area, the Ashburnham, Westminster, and um, Regional School uh, joint purchase arrangement, and other clients uh, in the area, um, Towns and Dunstable, of course yourself, uh, Westminster, Ashburnham, the Regional School, and Pepperell. Um, slide, please. And we are specialists in all um, municipal health benefits. So, uh, slide, please. I'm all done with the commercial. I hope that wasn't too gruesome, um, but I did. It is important. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It is important to let you folks know that we really are uh, the subject matter experts for municipal group health insurance in Massachusetts, we believe. And um, uh, so when we give you these recommendations, it's from the point of view of collectively between Joy, Ken and I having uh, somewhere, I think approaching 100 years of collective experience between municipal government and uh, the health insurance industry. So it's quite a depth of knowledge and uh, we've also got another five or six people in the municipal practice office in Northborough, all with uh, equally great depth and experience um, and other offices in Massachusetts. So uh, we really know the municipal stuff. And I myself am a retired town manager of some 40 plus years. And um, um, my contribution uh, to the deep knowledge that Ken and Joy have of employee benefits and plan design is um, a pretty solid knowledge there. Not as good as theirs, but pretty good. But I have a very strong uh, background, obviously, in municipal government. So the combination um, allows us to really uh, uh, present some uh, unique solutions to you. So <clears throat> here's the current situation. Dunstable is a member of Maya. It has the what we call the Blue Cross Blue Shield benchmark plan uh, with a 500, 1,000 deductible. Benchmark meaning it mirrors the most heavily enrolled GIC plan. And that is a reference to the Municipal Health Insurance Reform Act that gives cities and towns the right to adopt uh, the GIC benchmark plan with a vote of the Board of Selectmen. No collective bargaining uh, required. There are some uh, steps that need to be taken. We brought Dunstable through that process last year with 100% concurrence of their employees. Um, and that program is up and running for them and being very successful. Townsend and Templeton <clears throat> are also both Maya members. Um, Mr. Chairman, does your board know, are familiar with Maya and know what it is? Because I should take a moment if you're not. I'm familiar. I, um, I went to their, 
uh, I was the representative for Ten- Templeton at the uh, the annual meeting. Okay. Um, I felt like I was getting uh, stock quotes when they when they uh, announced what their rate hikes or decreases were going to be. So I'm definitely familiar with them. But if um, if any of the other and, and free, furiously <laughs> texting those numbers to my town administrator at the time, but if the okay. rest of the board would like a, an overview, um, please let me know. I'll just give you a thumbnail sketch, John, okay. and then if people That's have good. questions, they can ask. Maya or the Mass Interlocal Insurance Association is a consortium which operates under special legislation and <clears throat> allows cities, towns, school districts, special um, purpose districts um, to purchase property casualty, workman's comp, and health insurance through that collaborative. Um, yeah, I actually served on the board of directors for over a decade, and I actually was chairman of the board of directors for three years. So I'm very, very familiar with Meyer, and it's, I think it's fair to say it's an excellent organization and does great things for member communities. Um, but we regard it as um, a carrier, just like uh, mm-hmm. Blue Cross or Tufts or Fallon. Uh, right. They are one place that cities and towns can go to get their um, employee health insurance, but not the only place that you can go. Um, <clears throat> so with that brief explanation of Meyer, and I'll be happy to get in any more depth um, that the board would like. Um, so uh, Townsend and Templeton are, are Maya members. <clears throat> you have what's referred to as a legacy plan, meaning um, it's an older plan design. You have no deductibles and low co-pays. Templeton also um, has the distinction. Your municipal light department has um, a different plan uh, that's slightly um, structured, slightly differently structured than your plan, but also a Maya member. Uh, slide, please. <laughs> So we did a comparison for you this summer, and um, <clears throat> I know you probably can't read all that, but you'll see that on the left column is, uh, this is a standard industry comparison tool, which <clears throat> allows us to take a comparison of the most important plan design benefits um, in a health insurance plan and compare those uh, to other communities. So on the left side of the plan design benefits, And at the head of the column, uh, there's the town of Templeton, the town of Dunstable, and the town of uh, Townsend. And basically what you will see is that um, what I've already reported, Templeton and Townsend have essentially the same plan design, um, and Dunstable has um, a very similar plan design, but they've got the 500-1,000 deductible. So the reason we do that analysis is because we want to find out if you are close enough in plan design to be able to partner with one another, or if you're very, very divergent with respect to plan design and benefits, then it might not be possible. But what we found is that you're relatively similar, your rates are relatively similar, and um, you certainly have the potential uh, to uh, start a consortium uh, to take advantage of sharing uh, risk and purchasing your health insurance. Uh, Slide, please. We also look at your senior plans to be sure that those are uh, compatible because of course the last thing anybody wants to do is to upset your retirees. Um, I'm a senior now, proud, proudly over 65. And um, I find myself um, getting less and less um, uh, happy with change. So I understand that, uh, that concern now uh, very personally. And um, we don't want to, con- to uh, do anything to alarm or concern your retirees. And happily, when we did the analysis, we found that between the three communities, your benefits are essentially identical. There's one tiny change in the emergency room copay, but other than that, you're essentially identical. Um, and your rates are very, very close. So that was good news as well. Slide, please. So the challenge that's in front of all three communities is the same as it has been. We've been working in all three communities for Uh, two years, and Townsend for four, I believe. Um, So the problem, the main issue is that you have a small subscriber base under 100, all three of you, which means we cannot get claims data on you because Maya's policy is that if you are a member of Maya and are a community um, of less than 100 subscribers, then they will not provide claims data. Now, Without claims data, we can't take you out to the marketplace 
to do full insurance bidding. And frankly, health insurance is like any other commodity you might buy, whether it's paper or pipes. Um, these days, um, the market is highly competitive. The company with which you do business, whether it's Fallon, Tufts, Harvard Pilgrim, Blue Cross, Maya, the GIC, it's no longer the case that who you do business with really matters all that much because basically these days the carrier pays the bills, uh, sets up the network and not much more. Um, so it is very much the case that if we could take you out to the marketplace, you might be able to save a substantial amount um, in the premium that the town pays with its contributory share and the employees. Problem is you can't really bid with the carriers and get their interest unless you have claims data. Right. Now, right. there are some things we can do for you, and we have done them, and I'll get into that in a minute, which uh, had a very favorable result, um, somewhat unexpectedly. Um, and we were able to achieve that actually without claims data. But that's probably more an aberration of where the market is these days and is not something you could expect going forward. So it is imperative that we get you uh, collectively, Templeton and the other communities, over 100 and the best way to do that is for you to merge into a group where collectively you become what's called a joint purchase arrangement or a collaborative. Um, and you're already members of regional school collaboratives and maybe potentially some other collaboratives. So this is a common model that's been around a long time. And in fact, in Massachusetts, somewhere around 75% of all the cities and towns buy their health insurance through one collaborative or another. Um, so this is a, is a common model. And, and Maya, by the way, is a collaborative, it's just a, a somewhat unique one, but it's basically the same as a JPA. <laughs> so, slide please. Um, the challenge, therefore, without being able to get that claims data, uh, is that we can't access the highly competitive marketplace for you with that, which means, frankly, you're basically a captive of the group you're with now. You're a captive of Blue Cross and Maya because we can't get those good competitive uh, bids for you um, in a normal year, put it that way. <clears throat> um, now, there is a phenomenon that we refer to in the industry as geographic bias. And basically what that means is that <clears throat> if you access healthcare in a Boston urban setting, particularly at a teaching hospital, you're going to pay um, much more for a given medical procedure than you would pay for that identical medical procedure in a community hospital. So if you are far from the Maya flagpole, which is predominantly inside of 128 right, right. and 495 communities, then it is possible, in fact, likely, that the healthcare costs that the employees of Templeton pay are dollar for dollar less than the other members of Maya. And it is very possible that you are therefore paying rates which are subsidizing the remainder of the Maya pool. Now, if we had your claims, we could give you absolute precision on that question. Right. But since we are able to do that for other Maya clients, and we're able to do that for larger clients that aren't in Maya, we know that the general rule is the further you get from Boston, the cheaper your healthcare uh, costs get. And therefore, it is possible potentially to do better if you collaborate with communities that are also rural in your area. It's a simple principle. Um, and by the way, you can prove this to yourself simply by going on any search engine, um, Google, et cetera, and typing in cost of um, an appendectomy. And you can put in uh, hospitals in Boston and hospitals in your area. Um, now, this is not to uh, suggest, by the way, <clears throat> that if you have a serious health care issue that you might not go to the teaching hospital, UMass Medical Center in Worcester, or you might go to Boston. But the point of the matter is, is that most of us receive the vast majority of our health care in our local community setting. And we reserve the very high end um, health care settings uh, for serious illness, which most of us are not fortunately afflicted by. Right. So the bulk of your dollars are likely being spent locally and are likely um, at a much lower cost than um, what would be typical in Maya. In addition, <clears throat> um, if you're in the Maya group or you're in the GIC group, both very large groups, um, you don't control the plan design. A board of directors um, in those groups controls the plan design. And that does not necessarily mean that you're going to have control locally, nor are you necessarily going to have long-term stability. 
Um, and finally, without uh, while you are a member of Maya, you cannot consider the single most cost-effective way of financing your health care purchase, which is self-insuring. Now, <clears throat> as a single community, we would never recommend that because uh, the claim cycle is too uh, potentially volatile, and that would not be a, a wise way to do business. But if you're in a collaborative, you could certainly do that. And uh, right now, uh, self-insuring is um, proving extremely efficacious financially for all of the larger JPAs that are doing it, for the GIC and for Maya. And by the way, it's proving very, 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 very efficacious for the carriers as well. The carriers are saving enormous amounts of money because the premium they're collecting, which the premiums were set pre-COVID, uh, those premiums were set back in January, February, pre-COVID, but didn't start till July 1. And those uh, premiums never considered so many elective surgeries and other medical procedures um, that would be sacrificed to COVID. Um, and so uh, there's a great uh, gap between the dollars being collected by the carriers and the payments that they're making on behalf of their clients. There is a provision of the Affordable Care Act that requires them to share some of that surplus, but sad to say, it only requires a very, very small part of the surplus and not many um, are sharing much. Maya actually was quite generous uh, compared to Blue Cross and Tufts and Fallon. And Maya gave you 50% of your July um, health insurance bill um, uh, abated. Um, and that was the, the best cost sharing that we've heard of by anybody. So kudos to them. Slide, yeah. please. Yeah. So um, how does the JPA resolve these issues? Well, first thing it does is it gets you over 100 subscribers. And in fact, uh, if Dunstable, Townsend, and Templeton come together, you probably will be somewhere between 120 and 150 subscribers. So that puts you comfortably over that margin. <clears throat> um, another thing that claims data allows us to do is not just to go after the marketplace and get you competitive quotes, but it also allows us to analyze where your cost, where your healthcare dollars are being spent. And it allows us to identify opportunities where you can do plan design changes, which will save you and your employees uh, substantial uh, funds. Uh, this board um, has had some, uh, j just real quick, Kevin, this board yeah. definitely has had that experience um, w doing some wiggle room among the, the plans that we have available to us right now. So the board did kind of go through that. We've been through, a, you know, the column Good. research. So, um, Great. Um, so uh, those are uh, advantages. Um, it obviously allows us to go out to the competitive market and your uh, benefit. And uh, it allows you as a community to have long-term stability uh, because you're partnering with communities very similar to yourself. So, uh, uh, slide, please. In addition, um, we can tell you that based on the limited claims info, we do get some claims info, just not full robust info. Right. But based on the claims info we have been able to get, um, it is likely based on what we've seen that you can that you are probably paying more in your premium than what your claims would strictly require. And that's that whole geographic bias again that I've already explained. Um, and of course, with the JPA, local decision making is um, is the case. Uh, you would decide exactly what your plan designs look like, and um, finally, you can uh, you can take advantage of uh, self insuring. Slide, please. <clears throat> so the bottom line with the JPA is it offers a lot of benefits for you. However, here's the really really good news. So <clears throat> we've been looking at this JPA for a while, and we. Because we had some initial interest, um, I personally worked with your insurance advisory committee last year with a series of presentations where we basically taught them about health insurance and helped to start them down the road of becoming very sophisticated health insurance consumers um, and, to, and taught them about the many opportunities that they have for improving um, their benefits, modernizing their plan, saving money and taking advantage of a whole variety of opportunities, uh, including tax leveraging uh, to save themselves money uh, in premium and not cost themselves money in um, out-of-pocket costs. Mm -hmm. So part of that exercise was to look at the JPA 
and we've been doing it for some time. And when there, uh, there seemed to be growing interest on the part of the insurance advisory committees from the three communities and the professional management that we were um, speaking with also, um, Adam, Carter, Holly in uh, Templeton, and their counterparts in Dunstable and um, uh, Townsend, we actually went out to the carriers and we had some quiet conversations. And the result of that quiet conversation is that we can report to you tonight <clears throat> that if you merge into a JPA with the other two communities and we then issue the RFP on your collective business in January, you are going to get quotes which are in excess of negative 5%. Now, I will tell you the quotes will be better than that, but I'm not at liberty to disclose exactly what which carriers will quote and what they will quote, because there will be a competitive process following formulation of the JPA. And naturally, the carriers don't want to tip their hand until the formal process begins, which would begin in February, I'm sorry, January, and it would conclude in mid-February. But what I can tell you, and this is the wonderful position that you find yourselves in, <clears throat> is that you have a guarantee that your plan design is not going to change, but your rates are going to go down at least 5%, and uh, we are quite confident um, that they will go down even more. Right. What we're frankly hoping for <clears throat> is that one of the other carriers, Tufts, Fallon, Harvard Pilgrim, Cigna, Aetna, Com um, Neighborhood, and there's a bunch more, that one of them is going to pre present you with a really stunning offer, and that we can then leverage that to get you the best deal from Maya that is possible. Remember that this procurement for health insurance, we style it as a uh, Master in the Law 30B procurement, um, so that it's a competitive procurement similar to the way 30B uh, invitations for bids or RFPs would be structured, mm -hmm. but the law does not cover health insurance under 30B. So we style it like that, but we have great ability to negotiate, which you can't do under 30B, but you can do uh, because we're exempt from it. So we can take offers from carriers and we can attempt to get you the best deal that we can from Maya, i.e. Blue Cross. And it is entirely possible that one of two scenarios will emerge. You will either get um, a really good negative quote from a carrier, or you will get a matching or, or close quote from Maya, and you will have the very nice choice of changing carriers and saving a great deal, or potentially staying with, staying with Maya Blue Cross with not as much savings, um, but you'll be able to stay with Blue Cross. Now, we know as professionals that whether you go with Fallon, Aetna, Cigna, Harvard, really doesn't matter. But there is a perception out there, which is wholly the product of advertising on Blue Cross's part, that Blue Cross is the quote unquote gold standard and everybody should have Blue Cross. Well, the reality is that's not true, but employees sometimes have a strong feeling that it's true. And so what we hope is that for this first year, July 1, 2021 to June 30, 22, is that there's no change in benefits. Blue Cross slash Maya comes across with a great quote that matches uh, any competitive quote, and you end up staying with Maya and Blue Cross as your insurance company for the new JPA. Since, by definition, for Maya to do that, they're going to have to match the quotes from carriers that we already have promises from. Maya's going to have to sharpen their pencil, and they're going to have to really come after you aggressively in order to retain your business. Um, they will probably be very inclined to do so because all three of you are Maya members and Maya does not like to lose member communities. But they're going to have to work very hard to retain your business because this is going to be an extremely competitive procurement this year due to circumstances happening in the world largely related to COVID. For you, um, for the community, it means that the uh, potential for some very large savings in your health insurance budget is not likely. It's, it's basically going to happen. We can tell you it will. Um, 
exactly how much we, we we don't know because that will be the product of the RFP process, but it will be less than you're paying now. That much we can say with certainty. So um, the suggested plan is this. The three boards, um, three IACs, Insurance Advisory Committees, vote to recommend to the boards that you form the IAC. We have a favorable recommendation just as of this morning from the Insurance Advisory Committee in Dunstable. Um, <clears throat> we'll be meeting with your IAC next week and the Temple and the uh, Townsend IAC next week as well. Um, we'll be meeting with the Board of Selectmen in Dunstable next week, meeting with yourselves tonight. Um, and the Townsend Board, I've already met with once and we'll meet again next week or the week after. So we will ask the three boards for authorization to form the JPA under Chapter 32B, Section 12. Um, <clears throat> that will give you an initial JPA with over 100 subscribers. But eventually, we would like to see your JPA to get to 500 to 1,000 because that's really the sweet spot um, for the carriers. When you're 500 to 1,000 subscribers, the carriers really pay attention. The competitive procurement gets very aggressive and you get enormous long-term st stability because if one community has a tough claims year, you've got your partner communities to lay that claims off against and to stabilize it with partnering on the rate. Um, <clears throat> we, by the way, just based on the fact that the three communities are talking, we've already been contacted by one of the regional school districts in the area, and they've requested um, if they could have a conversation with us, and I'll be doing that tomorrow. So it could end up being the case that Dunstable, Townsend, and Templeton form the JPA, and all of a sudden, by the middle of January, you've got a large school district, which is in this immediate area, uh, that would like to join with you. Now, I'm not revealing who that is tonight because we, it, this has just happened in the last 48 hours. And um, I just got the email today from the business manager for the school district, and we'll be working with them. Moreover, we would need to look at their claims because they are over 100 subscribers. We need to look at their claims to make sure that they'd be a compatible partner with you. Right. The likelihood is they will. And the likelihood is they actually would have um, very favorable demographics and probably good claims. And they could be a very nice partner. And you could, instead of forming this on July 1 and being 120 to 150, you could form it on July 1 and be darn close to that 500 number, which would be a real, real achievement. Um, and that would translate into some real um, favorable uh, bidding, I think, on the uh, right. on the RFP that we'll issue for you. Um, so sometime, if the JPA forms sometime in January, we would issue an RFP for health and dental benefits. Um, all of the carriers now, the health carriers have dental partners. And if the dental um, bid produces the best quote from the partner for the best quote in health, then the health carrier will further reduce the cost of their quote because of bundling discounts. And that's just the same uh, bundling concept as you get with your, if you bundle your homeowners in your car and things like that, you get discounts for bundling and this works identically. Um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, we've done some bidding and uh, been able to reduce dental costs dramatically and uh, pick up uh, further discounts on the health side because of that bundling. So that's a real possibility. Um, we would expect my to come in with a very aggressive quote. We know that a couple of carriers are going to come in with very aggressive quotes or quotes, and we would hope that we'd have multiple quotes uh, from the marketplace. Uh, that would be in mid uh, mid February. And um, what we can tell you is that, uh, and we can say this with absolute certainty, because of the the quiet conversations we've had with these carriers is that you will do absolutely positively better as a JPA than you will do if you remain alone and you um, quote with Maya um, as a single community. We know that for a fact because the kinds of quotes that we've been uh, given um, will be very challenging for Maya to match, but the good news is you are gonna be the beneficiaries of that. So this is a uh, slide, please. Actually, I think that might be the last one. Um, no, I, I did have a quick it. question. Um, you, we had a, a pre previous conversation. You mentioned that Tufts was um, under a merger or is going to be bought at some point. Did you hear that? 
Yeah, I'll let my colleague Ken or, or Joy pick up on that. I know that the merger is not happening as soon as they thought, so we're actually getting quotes from Tufts against Harvard right now. Okay, interesting. All right. We just, for one of our clients... And real quick, Kev, uh, yeah. the merger is still uh, is still under uh, regulatory um, analysis, but it does look like probably sometime in 2021, there'll be a former merger between Harvard and Tufts and not likely operational until 2022. Um, but Kevin's point is that we would expect them to still continue business operations as is and both likely still be participants uh, in a bidding uh, situation. And for one of our clients on the South Shore, um, indicative of what Ken just said, we've already got a bid in hand um, from uh, Tufts for that client for a negative three. Uh, no no plan design changes and a 3% drop in their current premium, um, which um, ironically is, is a Maya, they are a Maya client Blue Cross right now. So clearly Tufts is in the business of bidding right now, um, even if, and in that case, they're bidding against Harvard and everybody else. So we know they'll bid. So this just gives you a summary. I don't need to go over because it it's everything that I just said to you, um, but it's a good kind of shorthand way for you to look at this. So what we'd like to ask you for tonight, ordinarily, what we would do is we would be bringing you this presentation after your IAC has already seen it, and hopefully they've given you a favorable recommendation. Now, because of the timing, and because we would like to get the community's boards of selectmen to vote in December, we had to present this to you before the IAC. So what we would respectfully suggest to the board is that the board, if this um, if this meets your pleasure, this plan, that the board vote to join the JPA on a contingent basis pending a favorable report from your IAC, which may or may not occur next week when we meet with them. Right. That will allow us to go forward through the balance of December, uh, putting the JPA agreement together, get that back to you for actual signatures. I've already reviewed it with the three managers it's largely a boilerplate document, frankly, and it's the same one that everybody else uses. Um, but we would uh, need to put that together, come back to you for signatures, and then get the, the uh, RFP put together. It's quite a, quite a volume of work, as you can imagine, and get it out on the street by around the second week of January with bids due by mid-February. So it's a lot to get done, um, and that means we don't have the luxury that we might usually have of um, – going to the IAC and then coming to the board, you know, later because of the timing of your meeting schedule this year. So that is the presentation. And um, as I say, this is, uh, this is a wonderful opportunity that you've got. Um, frankly, we don't think you're gonna see this opportunity again anytime soon. It's a very unusual juxtaposition of a lot of factors that are merging together and COVID is very much part of the picture, but Suffice to say, with what's looming for everybody next year with municipal budgets, um, you know, having your health care well, costs right. down by five, six, seven, eight percent with the employees being happy because there's no plan design changes. That is a very rare occurrence, but that is frankly what is about to happen for you. All right. Well, Kevin, I'd like um, I, I have it one um I've got two questions, but I also want to allow the board to to ask you, Ken, and Joy, any of these questions. The first, hey, how can you go wrong? I, I think you had said it in in, in so un, uh, in certain un, no uncertain terms, but how can you go wrong? How can you not save money by doing this? Um, the the one thing that uh, is very important to me is what are the effects. That table that you showed in, in the beginning, um, when it basically laid out the, all of the communities, I, I'm most concerned about the effects on the employees. Sure. We have shown that table to the carriers. Uh, that, is the that is the table they were given. They're actually given much, much more detailed documents to look at because that's the standard industry comparison document. But yep. your actual uh, summary of benefits is uh, probably a half an inch thick, maybe more. Um, so they had full access to all that. So the, the information I've given you, the negative quotes that we've been uh, provided are based upon that spreadsheet and that plan design. 
for right. your employees. Right. So, so what will happen is every carrier, no carrier replicates to the nth degree another carrier's plan. Right. That's your current plan. So another carrier might come in and say, look, we'll give you a negative eight, but instead of a $50 copay uh, for emergency room services, we're going to make it a $75. And then your IEC and the, and the JPA will, uh, board of directors will have to say, well, hey, you know what, <laughs> for, uh, for a $100,000 savings and we better pay $25 more, we'll take it. And remember, the town can always create what's called an HRA, a health reimbursement account, take a small piece of its savings and hold the employee harmless. So if the employee encounters that uh, higher copay, uh, the town can say, look, we'll reimburse you. So the employees get the, the very nice situation where they're not going to pay anything more than they pay now out of pocket uh, because you reimburse it. Um, but we don't know that that will happen. Uh, frankly, the bids could come in from another carrier, um, essentially identical to your current plan design. And that's honestly, that's what we expect. But if it didn't and there was a small difference, you've got the HRA tool, um, which you can use with great success. Okay. So in the, the, in the RFP process, um, it comes, a bid comes back, it, the negotiation part of it, who's responsible for that in the JPA? It, that's the it an issue. Like if, if, if one, one community said, yeah, I already have that. And then Templeton says, well, we didn't, and, or we did have that. Now it's going to be taken away. Who helps during that negotiate or who does the negotiation and who helps during that? We do the negotiation on your behalf. Okay. Uh, we're your advisors. So we do that negotiation, but we do it <clears throat> with the direct hands-on participation of the board of directors for the JPA, which is one representative from each community. But, and typically it's HR directors, town managers, treasurers, folks like that. Here. But the, right. But there's no, um, there's no uh, necessary prescribing who it is. It's whoever the town wants to have be the representative of the JPA. So with those three people, we conduct uh, those negotiations and typically they'd be done face to face. But, you know, to be candid with you, <clears throat> uh, we had a situation uh, a year ago <clears throat> where we did a competitive bid for, well, I can actually say because it's public record now with a Kushnet, um, Maya came in negative three, Harvard came in a little better. Um, the, uh, we went back to Meyer and said, would you like to improve your quote? We went back to Harvard and said, would you like to improve your quote? Maya's declined. Harvard improved it three points for a negative 6.5. We bundled the dental, dropped the dental rate 8%, um, dropped the medical rate another point, and a cushion it left Maya, went with Harvard program and achieved a negative uh, 7% with no plan design changes on the medical and a negative 8 with no plan design changes on the dental. So that is indicative of what's possible. And by the way, we've seen that scenario playing out repeatedly in the last two years because of the situation in the marketplace. Yeah. And my last question, um, before I, I turn it over to any, any of the questions, I know that Terry had one. Well, so we'll start with her. Um, the question of, I'm not sure how this fits into a, a, the JPA discussion this evening, but if you're transitioning to another plan, um, have you, it, it, in your experience, this is for Joy, Ken, or you, Kevin, um, doctors, you know, the, the things that I think of right away on an impact, if you go from Humana to Tufts, from, from Harvard to something else, what protects the uh, the employees if they have, like like you said, we're not Boston and we don't have a high density of, of certain types of specialists and, and um, primary care. What helps them keep their doctors? Is that an issue during this process? So what we do with the low bid, once the board looks at the bids, and by the way, we don't just share this with the boards. We usually work with the IACs too. So it's a very cooperative uh, uh, relationship. But the board picks the vendor. The, then the very first thing we do is, is what's called a disruption analysis. Ah, we take okay. the list of primary care physicians that you currently have, that your employees go to. We send it to the carrier, uh, to the new carrier, if it's a different company, and we ask them to do a comparison. That's mm -hmm. the disruption analysis. Now, <clears throat> depending upon who the low bidder is, Harvard Pilgrim and Blue Cross's networks are essentially identical. They may be a half a 1% different 
<clears throat> um, but basically identical. Fallon, you're in that part of the state where Fallon has a very robust network. So if you were on the North Shore or the South Shore and Fallon with a low bidder, you might have uh, some, some disruption. But in this part of the state, that's not likely. Um, and Aetna Cigna have different networks. So we do that analysis. Now, here's what happens. Let's say um, out of the 50 doctors that um, your, your employees collectively see, and we see two disrupted, two that are not in the plan, two things can happen. The new winning bid carrier can go to that doctor and sign him or her up. And basically, you know, what they're going to be told is you have access now to 150 new patients and they're going to sign up. So okay. invariably, that's not a problem. If there were to be this, in, I mean, we do this over and over, and it's very rare to have a doctor who's identified in the disruption analysis and who won't become a subscriber in, the, in, in a different company. And in that case, that doc, the employee so affected would have to pick a new primary care physician. And we understand. Yeah, can, I, can I interrupt yeah, ahead, for just one second? So, Mike, if it's okay, uh, let me elaborate just a little bit more on this because this is a sensitive situation or issue. Um, so, a couple things. Number one is Kevin's describing this whole business process with the potential or hopefully likely outcome where Maya continues to be the the um, the insurer of choice, if you will. And should that not happen, um, don't forget, group. Uh, we can also go to Blue Cross Blue Shield directly outside of Maya, so we're still using the same network of providers. Virtually all of the major plan carriers we're talking about, Blue Cross, Harvard, Fallon, Tufts, mm, I'm not so sure uh, uh, Health New England or Always Health Plan might be potential partner organizations right now, but for the most part, primary care physicians, uh, literally all hospital and outpatient facilities, testing centers are all likely duplicative of all of the different networks. But I do want to caution the group, and we'll, we'll go over this uh, with the team, and as Kevin has mentioned through a disruption, we do see occasionally some issues with behavioral health, for instance. Mm -hmm. Typically isolated networks that are attributable to individual carriers that aren't typically <clears throat> generally, but we, we, we do have a resource, and Kevin has explained it properly, where there is an outreach for a, uh, a credentialing process. In the odd, uh, in the odd uh, situation where a particular provider doesn't want to negotiate or enter into a, an HMO contract, then what we usually do is we set up something called a, 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 a separate PPO plan design. Mm -hmm. And what it means is it gives everybody access to any provider. Might be a little bit higher cost sharing, but there is a solution to literally just about every situation that we would see. Um, more likely, our challenge could be the pharmacy formulary, which could be somewhat unique by a particular uh, organization. Just today, we learned that Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to exclude um, um, certain opioid uh, medications as of April 1st. And so those are the types of things that we'll need to pay some significant attention to. But generally speaking, we think we have a, a solution for just about every situation that we may encounter. Thanks, Ken. Hey, both of you did a really good job of answering that question. Makes me feel a lot more secure because that's the first thing I thought sitting with Adam talking about this. <laughs> good point. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pass it over to uh, to Terry. Excellent questions, Mike. You started on the same vein that I was going to start <laughs> with relative to, um, you know, current rates and routine well care, what would happen, and um, then you you know, knocked it out of the pack with the rest of your, <laughs> with your questions. Um, so just to clarify, Network Blue New England, that's what you were talking about. That's Blue Cross Blue Shield. That's correct. And these three towns have um, a, a piece of blue care. Yeah. Just a little bit of different nuances. Templeton yep. has one extra one as opposed to the other two. So, all right. Thank you, gentlemen, and and good job. Good job, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Um, Teresa, if I may, um, my name is Joy Layden, and you brought up that Templeton has two plans. And so all along throughout the presentation, Kevin has been reiterating that uh, any JPA proposal 
would make sure that uh, there is no plan design change. And so we have shared that same message with both Dunstable and Townsend as they both have just one plan design. But within Templeton, we identified um, through the IAC last year and we tried to accomplish that last year, but was unable to um, due to some <coughs> voting differences. Right. But the, the goal is this year that there will be one plan with one set of rates so that the town and the power and light does match. So I just wanted to clarify that and let you know that. Right. Even, oh, I'm glad you did, Joy. Yes. Uh, thank you. That, that, that was definitely um, one, of, one of the subjects that we talked about the last time that we received the, the IAC's report. Right. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now I understand it. Yeah, I, I, so that, thank you. I'm glad you jumped in. Tim welcome. or Julie? Yeah, um, what I'm hearing, I like my industry. I've gone through a number of mergers and acquisitions and some of what was offered to us on the employee side of the house. It was interesting to see, and now I, I'm getting a better picture of all the behind the scenes and the negotiations and what was done for us up to and including with one provider who actually was covering the out of network costs on behalf of the employee, almost on the, uh, what Kevin had suggested, almost like an HSA that the right, town right. would hold to make the employees harmless. Yeah. And uh, it, it, the light bulb's coming on a lot brighter. Yeah, yeah that, it, that HSA is another tax leverage tool that's very powerful you have to have that high deductible plan like you've got in your company, which is a bit beyond where we are right now with the three towns, but that does represent an opportunity in the future with some solid employee education and uh, enabling uh, the HSA to help them. Uh, but that offers some, uh, some real opportunity for some substantial savings in the future uh, for everybody as well. So the merger is a great opportunity, but once you've got the merger put together, uh, then there's many things you can do that can offer you continual savings going down the line. So this is uh, this is really the tip of the iceberg, folks. We, we can do a lot of good things once you're combined in that group. What are the chances? Do you have to present to the light and water as well? What are the chances of? They're represented on the IAC, so they'd be part of that presentation next week. Yeah. How soon will we know? Um, presumably, Adam, if you can correct me, but my, uh, <clears throat> if what happened in Dunstable is repeated here in Templeton, their IAC voted immediately upon conclusion of the presentation while uh, Joy and Ken and I were still on the phone with them. So, um, you know, my expectation is that's probably what your IC will do as well. And then Adam can, uh, Adam and Holly can transmit that uh, back to you. That's not a guarantee. But, you know, based on what we've seen so far and the communications we've had with employees in other towns, they've been very favorably inclined toward this whole uh, uh, this whole potential. Yeah, yeah our, right. our, AI, our IAC has been, um, I, I think, of the same mindset that we have, taking care of the employees and, and saving money. Um, I, and that's what I that's what I hear tonight. So I'm 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 pretty uh, impressed at this point. Thank you. And, and by the way, board to uh, so the members of the board, Mike, <clears throat> your IEC has already been exposed to this idea very very thoroughly. Um, Joy and I did a series of presentations that were about two hours long, uh, over four months, one a month. So they had a really in depth um, education on all the opportunities out there in the health insurance. Uh, design world and methods of financing. So they won't be hearing this for the first time. They'll be hearing the result of what they know has been going on on their right. behalf for quite a while. When all is said and done, will there be somebody to explain it to the employee, to our town employees so that they can grab? As a standard, standard part of our services, what we offer to you is um, no limitation on any number of meetings that you'd like us to have with your employees to explain, you know, and that's obviously beyond the IEC, um, any meetings you'd like us to have with employees. That's any time where the IEC is recommending in favor of a plan design change, we make that offer. So if we have to go early in the morning for the police department shift change, we'll do it. Same with the fire shift change. Um, 
uh, your schools are regionalized, so that wouldn't pertain. Town hall, you know, library, whatever it is you need, we're happy to do it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Kevin, and I and I'd like that um, the way that the timing is is moving out. I think that uh, w what the board does tonight um, definitely should have the language um, pending the the meeting next week. Holly, do you know wh what uh, day that meeting is? It's the 16th. <laughs> okay. Holly did come off mute, but uh, she's. I think she's letting uh, the 16th stand there. All right, great. Yeah, I've got the 16th at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Okay. Copy. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Adam, Holly? I think every, every, everything was covered tonight, so. Yep. Yeah, and, and thanks, Kevin, Ken, and Joy for coming on tonight. Uh, great presentation. Um, I'm very glad that uh, you were you were Johnny on the spot with the questions as well, uh, because it, 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 the, the employees are definitely a concern. And I I wish the, the Department of Defense had the uh, disruption analysis. I went from uh, <laughs> Net Federal Services to Humana, and uh, I don't think they did that. Um, half the doctors disappeared in Humana. So that's mm. kind of that background of making sure that we're looking at the effects. That yeah, that can happen with the large nas national carriers. That can happen because their networks are not um, state-based. They're, they're national. And so, yeah, you can have some real disruption when you go with national carriers. So, so you got to be careful with that. My wife reminds Mike, me every, uh, every day that we had Humana. <laughs> yeah. Mike, does the board feel comfortable at this point with taking a contingent vote? Uh, to support the JPA concept or something of that nature, basically. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, Kevin. I was going to ask if, uh, if there was going to be a motion at this time. I'll entertain a motion for action relating to creating a joint purchase group uh, with Dunstable and Townsend. Chairman. Yes, please, Tim. I move to approve moving forward with creating a joint purchasing group with Dunstable and Townsend pending our IAC vote to support the same at their next meeting, which we have stated is December 16th. Second. Great, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussions? It was pending, so what happens? We have to go back to the drawing board if it If votes. the IAC votes favorably, <clears throat> then the next step would be the document would be, would come to you uh, sometime in the next uh, after the IAC vote for the board's actual signature, because but because you've already voted it, you wouldn't have to take another vote. You could just right. sign the document. If the IAC were to report unfavorably, then then you would not. Then your vote would not be executed. We wouldn't send you the agreement because your vote is contingent upon favorable right. recommendation. Now, in that case, what we'd find out That's is what, what is the IAC's right. issue and try to address it. Um, you know, right, Terry. Our our motion would self discard on that. That's why that's why you wrote it, you wrote it that way. Uh, Holly has her hand raised. Go ahead, Holly. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Kevin: Is this going to be something the whole board will need to sign, or do we need to vote for just the chairman to sign? Um, the agreement generally has a signature block for each board member, but you can the board can empower the chair to sign too. Uh, that's not a problem. In the package. As long as there's a vote recorded minutes authorizing the chair to sign, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, you got some feedback there. So the document that is in our um, agenda packet uh, looks like it does have a, a, a signature block for just the chair. Uh, Tim, would you would you uh, be opposed to amending your motion to allow the chairman to sign that? Hold on, you're on mute. Wait, you're on mute. There we go. I have no problem making that amendment that we have the chairman sign on behalf of the board if approved favorable through our IAC just to expedite the process. Thank you, Tim. And re-second? Second. Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, Holly, you have your hand up again. 
No, sorry. I think I need to unclick it. <laughs> uh, I got you covered. I got that button. Any, uh, any further comments or questions? Just one thing, if I might, Mike, I just want to throw out a, uh, a shout out to Holly and Adam and um, Carter, who has uh, moved on now. Um, but those three folks have been working very actively with us for the last two years and with the IAC. And I wanted to report to the board that they've been outstanding uh, partners for that conversation um, and great representatives of Templeton. So kudos to all of them because their hard work made a lot of what's uh, happening tonight possible. And thank you to the board and happy holidays all. Stay well and safe. You too, Kevin, Ken, and Joy. Thanks for that. And don't and uh, remember, Carter's still out there. You, you, you thought he retired. Somewhere. He, he'll be bothering you in it from another community. Yeah, he probably will. That That's okay. I've known him for 30 years, so it's a welcome bother. <laughs> Thank you for the encouraging words. Much appreciated. And yep. happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Um, if there are no if there are no further um, questions on the motion to um, go into a joint purchasing group with Dunstable and Towns and pending the IAC votes to support the same at their next meeting and allow the chair to sign. How do you vote? Tim? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Again, Ken, Joy, Kev, looks like Kev, uh, Kevin dropped off. Thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank so. Good night, Thank everybody. you. Happy Dad. Merry Christmas. All right. Our next um, item on the agenda this evening is action relating to the authorization to negotiate a host community agreement um, with Cannabonics uh, LLC. Adam? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, not too long ago, Cannabonics LLC held their uh, community outreach meeting with the, with the uh, folks. They sent out, you see in your packet, the uh, uh, legal notice that went out to all the abutters. They also uh, posted in the uh, Gardner News within the uh, requirements. And now that they completed this, uh, they would like, you know, to move forward and on a host community agreement. And this was the proper process that needs to be followed in order to do so. Uh, keep in mind, this is the same location at 642 and Zero Patriots Road that the chairman's showing up on the board there. Uh, for the cultivation facility, the board already authorized to negotiate two other proposers uh, that I have in my memorandum there uh, to be located at that site. So this one would be the third at 642 and Zero Patriots Road. Okay. Two other ones that the board authorized were Sugar Grove LLC and Impress and Bandit Greenery LLC back in September 2020. Yeah, okay. it, what I appreciate about this, Adam, uh, thanks for that present, quick presentation. Uh, what I appreciate about this is that, you know, we we didn't have, we, we had possibilities that fell through for whatever reason. Um, I really appreciate that we've kept up the fire and we've remained in the marketplace for this emerging uh, industry, whether it's retail or um, or cultivation. So uh, kudos to you, your team, um, to keep up the fire and um, and for us to remain re relevant out there and look at the different possibilities. Um, I think this one even came out of the same day that we found out that uh, 1620 or 16, I forget the name of the, uh, the, other, um, the other company that we had fall, fall through, on the very same day you were working on this one. So I applaud these efforts and I absolutely support a, um, a host community agreement with Cannabonics. Thank you. In fact, I move to authorize the town administrator to negotiate the host community agreement with Cannabonics LLC. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Tim or Julie, do you have any questions on that? I have none. I okay. didn't. I, I have none. 
Uh, All right, thank you, Julie. Go ahead, Terry. I didn't get to watch that, um, but how did it go, Adam? Uh, it went great. Uh, it was, a, I think, within an hour, not even actually, and uh, we didn't, I didn't receive any negative feedback uh, on this one. The abutters? So overall, it was, I thought it went pretty smooth. Anything from the abutters? Uh, the only thing I, I received was a phone call and the representative for Cannabonics, the, their attorney called them back. And I even told the, the person on the phone, if you, you have any issues, feel free to let me know or send me an email, write me a letter. And I didn't receive anything. So apparently their questions were answered. Yeah, I've watched a few of your um, the outreach meetings and they, they, they go pretty well. Um, the companies are very well represented. Um, I have to say that this industry, I think if they're, if they're, there's a lot of hoops that you have to go through and they're doing a good job. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen one that's gone sideways yet. Okay, uh, Julie doesn't have anything. Tim, anything else, Terry? Just good to know. Good to okay. Be. All right, on the motion to authorize town administrator to negotiate the HCA with Cannabonics LLC, how do you vote, Tim? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? Yes. Thanks. And I vote yes as well. Holly, that was unanimous. Thanks, team. And uh, next item is action relating to the FY19 Community Development Block Grant, grant uh, or a, a budget revision um, related to that. Uh, Adam, we do have the, uh, the materials in the packet, but if you wanted to do a quick overview on that. Peter Sanborn, our CDBG person, reached out to us and was requesting a, a transfer um, from one item to another. Uh, it, it's, as outlined in the memorandum, uh, that was for the justification for the budget revision request. And uh, this is just something that has to be going in front of the board. Fortunately for us, the uh, project for Orchard Lane went out for procurement at a time when there was some very competitive bidding and uh, that project went quite well and uh, budget uh, didn't, was completed approximately 11,000 or less than 2% above the original contract price. It's always nice to see that uh, happen. And this is just really just taking money uh, from one account, putting it into another uh, because you got the Orchard Lane project uh, that's being worked on. And we also have our ADA uh, plan that they're doing so they're just taking one one uh some funds from one area and putting it into the other okay and that fifty four hundred dollars goes towards the uh the the disconnect for orchard lane it doesn't quite um cover it so in in this uh what we have on the screen right now the 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 small gap that remains that's covered by chapter 90 or the water department that is correct and they were actually very happy because we were that's looking small. at yeah i mean it was just a few thousand we're talking i mean compared to 100,000 so both the water and even bob were very happy to see uh, the outcome of that project yep makes sense to me because basically the grant basically covered everything for the most part just some minor um, and we need to do that uh i know the the uh, community block grant uh does it expire does it turn into a pumpkin at the end of the month uh these funds they're they're in the budget so okay i know i talked to mr Sozik and can he put three percent away for the for in case anything comes up in the spring In that document, it said the contract end date was the 31st of December for 2020 for this block grant. This is basically just moving that last bit um, that was excess from the uh, the, AD the ADA portion, correct? Okay, so this is just really grant cleanup and contract rebalancing. So I, I, I like that, that's good, efficient use of the money. Well, Peter wanted me to sign and I said, I gotta go to the board. Yeah, I think any um, 
I know I actually misspoke on the insurance one. I didn't. I, I was looking at the wrong document. It's this one that has the chair signature on it. Um, are you a? How we? How do we need to craft a motion that allows you to sign it, or is that my signature? That's your signature. Okay. I believe there's another page at the office with mine, but it needs yours as well. In our motion, it said Adam. Yeah, I've um, the TA's got to be on there, and I'm looking at the um, – I can't find the form number. It's the budget and program revision form that you have in your uh, in your packet. There's a signature on there, um, or the only signature that I see on that one is mine, but if Adam's got a signature as well – so if any motion should just reflect um, for the town administrator and for the select board chair to sign any related documents. Mr. Chair, I move to approve. Mr. Chair. I'll let Julie go. Go ahead, Julie. Uh, Terry gave the, you the floor. Thank you, Terry. I, I just had a quick question for Adam. Can you just review that contract one more time because i've looked it over a couple of times for the orchard lane project um i'm not really clear on why we're using chapter 90 for anything on that project i followed that project obviously because i live on the lane um i followed it pretty closely so mm. i was a little bit confused and i still am so maybe you can clarify that well, because of the road work, the chapter 90, there was a chapter 90 commitment for that portion of the project. Uh, fortunately for us, the, the CDBG grant covered almost the whole project. So there was just some minor chapter 90 that went into it and some funds from the Templeton Municipal Light and Water Plan. I know I talked to Bob Sozik and he did call me and told me they spoke to Mr. Driscoll and he was pretty happy uh, about the final outcome of the project. So it's a contingency. Thank you, All right. Thank you Julie. Thanks. Uh, excellent question. Um, Terry, I think you were about to move. Yes, sir. I move to approve the transfer of $5,400 in excess funds from the ADA plan budget over to Orchard Lane project account and for the town administrator and the chairman of the board to sign any related documents. Great. I have a motion. Okay. I have a motion and a second from Tim. Thank you very much. Any further questions or discussion on the, the balancing of money within that uh, CD BG? Okay, hearing none on the motion to move the 4,500 from the ADA budget to the Orchard Lane project and for the town administrator and the chair to sign any related documents. How do you vote, Tim? Yes. Terry? Yes. Julie? No. And I vote yes. Uh, Holly, that was three to one. Okay, thanks team. And the last item on our amended um, agenda for this evening is we received a open meeting law complaint on the 7th of December. Um, a quick synop synopsis of the complaint is that it alleged that myself and Terry Griffiths spoke about a agenda item from the 23rd of November uh, business meeting prior to the meeting. Um, and th that's essentially the complaint that went forward to the adjutant, uh, adjutant the attorney general's office uh, for uh, review. Um, I would suggest to the board, um, we, we can certainly d discuss it. I would say let's, uh, we can um, let uh, Adam do the the investigation and I would recommend that uh, Adam put together the response the same way that we did with the uh, the last open meeting law complaint that we received. I believe that was July, a couple of months into uh, our COVID uh, emergency response. Has everybody had a chance uh, 
to uh, read the copy of that uh, all mail complaint? I have, Chairman, and I'm a little confused because two select board members can speak and it's it's not a violation. We all know that it has to be more than two. So I, I don't understand the situation. We all need to communicate. Um, this is getting a little ridiculous and it's using, you know, town funds, um, which is really ridiculous in my opinion. On the, the basis of the complaint, I would agree with your assessment, Julie. Um, it's already gone off to the AG's office, so got to handle it. Um, that's, you know, obviously you, you, you know that, um, I'm sure that you've, you've seen these before. Um, that's why I want to keep it short, give the authority to Adam to, uh, to put, to put that, um, that, uh, response together. That response then goes to the complainant and, um, also the AG's office and Tom Harrington. Um, Adam, if, if we give you the authority tonight, um, do we get a chance to review that? Or do we have to make a motion uh, for a way to, to review that? One of us uh, work with you to review it. We're, I don't think we meet again until... Well, I would send it to the people you just mentioned uh, or the agencies as well as the select board. I'd see okay. them on that. Thank you, Adam. I just don't... I, short and sweet would be really appreciated. We don't want any extra funds toward any of this nonsense. Two of us can speak. It's not a violation. Everyone knows it. We've seen this a few times. Um, I've certainly seen it more than half a dozen times. Um, people need to read the law and and stop wasting our time and energy. It, and again, just my personal opinion. I think it's a waste of time. Thanks, Julie. Okay, I'm clear on that. I'll entertain a motion if uh, if people agree with uh, that recommended course of action. Mr. Chairman. We're, oh, sorry. Yes. We're allowed to make a... If we're I'm going to let Tim... Uh, I'm going to let Tim do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I move that we authorize Adam as our town administrator to conduct the investigation and to make the necessary contacts with the town attorney, the AG's office, and the complainant. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Are we allowed to vote on this? Like, as implicated, uh, we have to recuse ourselves? Do we have a quorum for this? Like, how is what's well, on that? I think that's a great. I think that's a great question. Um, I, I I certainly don't want to tiptoe around um, getting business done. You know, if it, if the intent is to receive this complaint, regardless of what it's alleging or otherwise, it's not. You know that the AG is the the authority on that. We're basically saying we received a complaint. We're we're recommending that this guy right here. <laughs> Um, getting good at that, Adam, right? So uh, we're recommending that he basically um, take care of this for it. We're not voting that um, Terry and Mike are going to go write the uh, the response to it. <laughs> so I would feel comfortable voting on um, giving Adam that, uh, that tasker. Yeah, but are we allowed as we don't have to recuse ourselves? Do you see what I'm saying? Is it legal for two people like that are implicated to do we have to abstain because we're implicated it's concerning well, well, if, I, I, I think a good you, question go ahead adam if you look at any kind of complaint let's say three members of a five member board are accused of something the, the body still needs to act right so we would invoke uh, necessity that's what i was going to add mr chairman this may be one of those rare exceptions where invoking the rule of necessity relieves that burden okay absolutely agree with tim on that paul you have your hand up 
Yeah, was there a second and I missed it? There was a second. Um, Julie, uh, Tim had the motion and Julie seconded it. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Adam or Holly or um, or Ju I mean anyone. Uh, do we just basically uh, say uh, yeah? I'm in, I'm invoking the uh, the rule of necessity so that we can actually act as the uh, as the uh, as the um, the select board. The fact that I'm mentioning it is that enough, Adam Holly? I can I'll add it into the motion if everyone's okay with that? Okay. Absolutely fine with that. I have no problems adding that to my original motion. Okay. Great. If there's no further discussion on the motion uh, to direct the town administrator to draft that response, um, that would go to the complainant, the uh, our attorney, uh, town council, and the attorney general, um, and for the board to invoke the rule of necessity. Um, how do you vote, Tim? Yes. Julie? Yes, as long as it's short and sweet. <laughs> Terry? Yes. And that gives us the quorum for it. So I will, I believe I, I can abstain and we still have the motion passed because most of it was directed at me anyway. I will abstain. Okay, looking at our our um, our agenda, that was the last item for this evening. I see the time is eight twenty one. Um, I see no old, old business on our um, agenda. Uh, I'd like to move to board and staff member comments. Tim, Mr. Oh. Chairman. Yep, please go ahead, Julie. Uh, thank you. I just want to apologize for the absence. Um, in the last few months, I've had a lot of different things going on. And of course, I work, um, as they call it, on the front lines. Uh, so there's been a lot going on. And obviously, we're going through a spike once again with the COVID virus. So um, just wanted the public to be aware that I am still wholeheartedly invested in the town of Templeton and um, once again apologize for my absence and I'm hoping to get um, more involved and and be there as as much as possible with the major votes in town. Great thank you Julie. Thank you Julie. Mr. Chairman a couple quick things. Yeah absolutely. I know we've gotten through most of the country roads Christmas, and from what I'm hearing, that was an absolute success. A lot of support from the community, people getting their passports stamped at all the various vendors, and uh, I'm sure everybody in the business world was appreciative of that as well. And a quick follow-up on our discussion, the last meeting on the veterans parking spot. I was in contact with Dr. Casavad over at the school, there's very limited information on how that sign showed up there other than it was agreed on and they're supporting it fully. I did reach out to Sheila Pelletier, our VSO, who also reached out to Mr. Kaplis as our former VSO. And again, records are a little bit unclear. The school is good with whatever we want to do. They want to keep it there. And John gave me a little bit of background and insight. Uh, it went back as far as uh, Peter Cushing when he was the principal of the middle school. And that's when the sign was actually erected. So we have a lot of support there. And I think we can put that side of it to bed. And it was more phone calls than just waiting for people to get back. But that's okay. That's what we do. Great, Great job. You. Go ahead, Terry. Great job, Tim. No problem. Appreciate your dedication as the liaison to the school. Top notch. I, uh, and for my two cents, I just want to encourage people as COVID wears on and wears on their nerves, please don't get, please try to fight your discouragement. Um, you know, look up things you can do. 
fresh air is always good to, to battle your moods and uh, carry on and wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance and keep abreast of the facts and we will get through this. Thank you, Terry. And I would love to follow up on that. Um, Terry actually sent me a, um, a link to a, a Mass Municipal Association article about dealing with, um, with everything that's been going on, not just you know, the virus, but the, all of the conditions that uh, we have. If I, I, I subscribe to Time Magazine and I got the, uh, the uh, issue today and it had 2020 with a big X through it and it said 2020, the worst year ever. Uh, right on the cover of Time, but um, that uh, that article was written by the uh, current president of the MMA, Jeff Beckwith. So if you get a chance, um, uh, point your browser over to the MMA site and read that fantastic article about uh, resiliency. Very interestingly enough, um, I, so I work full time for the Air Force, and the Air Force is trying to also um, navigate through this, and they have they have these things called. Um, they're called AFMC Connect or Air Force Material Command Connect. They want the, the, the units uh, to basically get together on, much like we're on Zoom, we get on Microsoft Teams and we talk about stuff. Today was, um, today was much like uh, the, the article that Terry gave me. It talked about what is being a, on a team, uh, specifically in the Air Force, uh, right, Tim? You got a wingman that... Um, that wingman is always next to you. Like right now, I've got I got Terry on on one side. I got Adam. I got my I have my wingman who can look out for me, even if I don't see it. Um, I think that's important. We really need to be wingmen for our family and for our friends and our coworkers. Um, it's so difficult, or it, it can be so easy to get uh, blinders on and get. Um, um, bogged down with uh, work or um, I've got kids that uh, are in um, are, are um, in tele uh, teleschool teleworking and it's it's been very difficult to try and, and get through that so take the time be a, be a good wingman be a good team member and reach out and uh, make sure especially right now in the in the holiday season the Christmas season the holiday season uh, to make sure that you can be a good wingman uh, to your buddy or to your uh, your family members. Um, well said, Mike. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. Um, I, w I will uh, I will say we are in the holiday season. Um, this year we did not do the Christmas uh, lighting. Uh, there are a lot of things this year that we're going to be able to catch up and do um, a, a better job or not a better job to, to, to catch up and do the things that we missed this year. That's okay. Um, around my house, we, we say that we would have loved to gotten uh, to get together with um, family at Thanksgiving, but we understand what the conditions are and it's about saving lives. It's about protecting each other right now. Um, so you just let it go. You say, that's something we'll catch up next year. You say to, to your friends, we'll just kept up, catch up, um, you know, after April. Again, go out there and look at the governor's uh, vaccination plan. It uh, gets millions of doses out there by April and my, May time, time frame. So we're going to have these, the, these, these, uh, these great days again. We just got to uh, buckle down, say 2020 was the, one of the worst years. Uh, for trying to get this stuff done and um, and look forward to the better times. Adam Polly, go ahead, Terry. And I didn't mean to speak twice, but um, one little meme that I like was Snoopy sitting on the top of his doghouse typing on his typewriter with, he said, Dear 2020, I want you to know I'm typing this with my middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about I would hope to inspire anybody that's watching or in the future watching, we're making new memories. We're being creative. I mean, we've got a song contest going. Who can write the best family Christmas song and perform it live on Zoom? You know, it's it it's not it's it's kissing goodbye some of the old traditions, but reinventing yourself is 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 very fun. Agreed. And especially when you have kids and grandkids, they don't know 
like the little kids, a lot of them, two of them are four and they do do know the one four year old is, you know, particularly taking it hard. But the the one year old, this he doesn't know what <laughs> he doesn't know. So we're just trying to, like I said, reinvent ourselves and stay safe in the in, in the in the meantime. Well said, Terry. Thank you. Adam or Holly? I think the board pretty much covered everything uh, with everything going on in 2020. Just look out for your family and your neighbors and treat people good. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. All right. I, I think that uh, brings us to the end um, of our meeting. We do not have any requests for executive session this evening, so I will um, entertain a uh, real quick. Our next meeting, looking at the calendar, we are all done for December. Our next business meeting is January. Our next workshop is January 6th, and our next business meeting is January 13th. Um, uh, happy holidays to the rest of the boards and committees. Uh, I thought uh, Monday went very well. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion? Second. And a second. Excellent. All those in favor, let's see your thumbs up and uh, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Great. Any opposed? Okay, we are adjourned at 8.31 p.m. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a great holiday, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Thanks, everyone. everyone. Have Bye. a great holiday. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. At the bonnet, as they say.